Hey guys, Archer here, first year medical student. Today we're gonna to be going through exactly how it was to sit the UCAT for myself and what I learned from it as well. Then I'm gonna be sharing with you the things that I learned from the experience. In fact, particularly dealing with like the anxiety, uh, the stress, the loss of focus and concentration and all that sort of stuff. So let's get straight into it. All right, so let's start off with my test day experience. So I actually sat the UCAT at 9 a.m. on my test day. And that's basically just because of all the exams that I sort of do, I prefer when they're in the morning. It's basically because I feel fresh and that means I can go in just having the UCAT as my sole focus. That meant I went in with my mind clear and I could pretty much just go in and then exit and then get on with my day and whatever else. So the UCAT would just be in the past. Now, actually, personally, I sat the UCAT almost as late as possibly as I could in terms of the days. This was more so my plan because this was the first year that the UCAT was being run in Australia, only last year. So we actually never knew what the UCAT would be like, if it would be similar to the UK at all, and their UK CAT, which is now called the UCAT, or it'd be something completely different. But because I left it late, there was so many people who did the UCAT before me, I could actually find out what the UCAT is sort of like before even going into it. And that was like sort of useful because everyone was telling me it was sort of similar, uh, to all of their mocks and it was pretty similar to what was being done in the UK as well So let's actually get into what happened at the day So because the venue was pretty far away from my house I got up pretty early and I arrived there quite early as well pretty much I wanted no reason at all for like the day to go wrong So I made sure that I arrived there early and I had all this sort of extra time to sort things out uh, mentally before I went in there. So I actually arrived there around probably 45 minutes to an hour before I actually needed to be there. That was just because between me and the venue, there was a bit of traffic and I didn't want that to be a factor in, you know, ruining my concentration going into the UCAT. So I had that time to sit in the car with my mum and actually get into the zone and prepare mentally for this really intense two hours of work. And that was really important because those minute long section breaks aren't really the most amount of time to do whatever you want. So getting myself into the headspace before the exam was the best thing to do and that carried throughout and meant that I had composure throughout the whole thing. So I went in and I lined up behind everyone else who was preparing to do their UCAT. I had all the required things that they say on the UCAT website, like you have your identification, for example, and then like proof that you are the person sitting right now at this time and you booked this time as well. So when I came to the front of the line, there was a lot of paperwork and registration that we had to do. Part of it also included that we had to get our photo taken, which is kind of interesting. It just makes sense because they're trying to make sure that, you know, I am Archer and I'm actually the one who's supposed to sit this exam at this time. Once I finished that, I just chucked all my stuff in the allocated locker that I was given and then I was told to sit down and wait. So I met up with friends who were already there and I spoke with them a little bit, but I didn't really want to speak to them too much just because, you know, this important exam was coming up. So I wanted to focus on that more. And the really stressful thing is you could see every few minutes or every five minutes or so, you would see someone else leave the room in a little group. And that was just because they were about to start their UCAT exam. So like one by one, I saw my friends leaving and entering the room and I was just sitting there. So eventually after waiting and waiting, they said it was time for me to sit the UCAT. So basically the person just said a few rules that we needed to know. And then he asked us to like show our ears, pull out our pockets inside out, show up our sleeves, just in case that we were trying to smuggle anything in and try and cheat. Even though there's not really much you can cheat by having some notes on your hand or something like that, because the UCAT isn't a knowledge-based exam, it's based on your skills and that's gonna show straight through. When I walked into the room, it was basically just a few booths with some pretty crappy computers set up. Each booth had their computer, which was just some sort of old HP with a square-based screen. And then there was the old keyboard, the old mouse, and then laminated paper with a permanent pen. They told us all those standard things like it's exam conditions. And if you wanted laminated paper, like more of it, then you would have to put your hand up the whole time and wait for them to come around and give it to you. Now, actually the craziest thing that happened for me is that in the quantitative reasoning section, my exam crashed. And I just basically had to sit there with my hand up until someone came to me. So there was a really stressful two minutes within my exam at that point. And the person came to me and was like, really sorry about all of this thing that's happened. And she's like, oh, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. 
And then she pretty much just did a few things on the computer and then the computer started to reboot. But during all that time that it happened, as soon as it came back online, I had to start again. So I was trying to get back into the mindset and forget about everything that just happened. And so that kind of showed the importance of having this strategy to maintain my composure when something like that actually happened. And that happened to no one else in my venue as well. So that meant I actually finished the last in our group in that room. It wasn't actually too bad because I knew that they had thought of these things before because this is a digital exam. Even though my exam crashed during QR, it still ended up being my best. The other thing was is that by the time SJT had happened, there was a lot of people leaving at that point. So that was extra distracting because I was really tired from, you know, just doing it for another uh, 90 minutes. And now I'm trying to finish off the SJT and people are leaving halfway through it. So I just really kept my focus, paid attention to the screen in front of me and just focus purely on that. So let's actually take a look at the things that I was doing in preparation to the UCAT and then what I did during it as well in order to maintain my composure and deal with all these test taking issues besides actually just my proficiency in the UCAT. Okay, so it's really intimidating that the UCAT is this two hour exam that is full jam packed and it literally defines all of your work that you've done revising it from before. And it's also quite stressful when it has a factor in determining if I get into the middle school or not. And albeit it's probably pretty significant as well. But because I knew I had spent all these hours of productive study and effective study towards the UCAT, I knew that would pull me through the rest of this exam. I just had to do the same things that I was previously doing in my mocks, which were producing results. So it was just the same thing here. This is why I actually did something a little different in my last week before sitting the UCAT. So essentially I went out with full on psychological conditioning so that I could be as familiar with this test taking process as possible. This meant that nervousness and anxiety couldn't get hold of me when I was sitting that UCAT. It's how I built this composure that sustained me throughout all of it. In the week before, I was doing a lot of mocks and I would get up at the exact same time every day and sit the UCAT at the same time that I would actually sit it at 9 a.m. I was dressed up, I got ready the same way that I did on the test day and I would sit it on an old computer that was pretty crappy and slow and I had the laminated paper and the permanent pen so that I could simulate everything that was gonna happen. Obviously, you can't simulate everything, but just being able to do as much as I could meant that I would feel more comfortable. So in the end, it worked. I felt a lot more comfortable with the idea of sitting down for two hours in front of an old computer and getting this done. Now, onto some sort of more actionable advice. I had a sort of trigger for myself if I was losing focus, and this is psychologically backed as well. So whenever I felt my focus wandering, I basically just gave myself a little tap and that reminds me that I had to get back to whatever it was that I was doing. And this was really useful because it's really hard to keep 100% concentration throughout all of those two hours. I would just tap myself on the side and then I would put my eyes on the prize again and do it. I also focus a lot on breathing because that's just one of the things that always helps with any sort of nervousness or anxiety or anything like that. So during each of those one minute breaks, I would close my eyes and breathe slowly and completely forget about the section that I just sat. That meant that I could adopt the mindset of the next section that I was about to sit. And that meant no matter how bad or how good the past section went, my mind was set and focused on the next section. So for example, as soon as I sat VR, I completely forgot about it. I spent that time to forget about it and get my head into the zone for sitting DM. So I was thinking about all these little things that I need to know to sit DM correctly. And that one minute goes really quickly. So it's really important that you practice this as well when you are sitting your mocks. Another thing is, as always, you hear sleep is really crucial. And that's why in that week, I had a really consistent sleep schedule, more than I usually do, just so that I made sure that everything would be fine when I sat the UCAT. That meant the day before I had everything prepared with documents and everything, all those identification, so that I could just get up, get ready and go straight to the UCAT and get it done. It meant I felt very comfortable on the day and the, there was no surprises coming up to the UK. And I guess it's just a, all these other little things like making sure that you're eating the same sort of foods and not try something completely new that might make you sick, all that sort of stuff. And this actually brings me to a good point that I didn't actually study much UCAT at all on the day before. It was very, very, very light. We already know that the UCAT is an exam that you can't cram for. And that's because one, it's skill-based and also because of the immense speed that you need throughout it. The main reason you can't actually cram for it is because of speed. It's based off all of those skills that you've been developing. 
and without developed skills you won't be able to do it quickly and correctly. So for the day before I didn't really do much for the UCAT. It was just to keep my mind on the ball but not to overwork myself at all because I had all those months before. So in the end I just spent some time relaxing and doing some exercise as well to make sure that I was keeping fit and that was super important. So those were the things that I took away from this experience and overall even though my exams crashed it was okay in the end and it didn't really matter. But if I hadn't had all this practice from before and all of this conditioning and all that sort of stuff, I don't think I would have coped with that as well as I did on the day. So because the exam is pretty significant and influential in getting into medical school, I think it's really important for you as well to make sure that you spend the required time that you need to study for the UCAT. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks again for watching and bye-bye.